she said, look, I have this second house which I'm doing up. And uh, you know, I'm ready to buy on eBay. I've never bought, but I'll try buying on eBay. So we said, okay, that's, we went, we went back and actually said, no, what do you mean? We need to give her stuff free. And then we actually did a deal with her. We said, okay, we'll give you a budget. And uh, you buy stuff on eBay. And you put it online. And we do a press conference in this house of yours. And we know who are our, you know, the top for about 8,000 buyers. Uh, Bombay, Pune, Nasir, you know, Kalyan, I mean, suburbs of Bombay. And it was a fairly large enough number. To our top buyers, we'll actually send them an invite to come one, so we do a day's, you know, one day where she'll have an open house, it was the second house. Um, and that's all, that's, that's what we did. So we called the press conference, we did the press meet in our house. And we, you know, we actually had national television coverage and we were all over uh, in the media. The result was, you know, lifestyle as a category at that point was really, really small. I mean, it was 15, 20 percent uh, for business. In a two and a half, three month period, because we kept on you know, getting coverage uh, online, we actually got five lakh visitors on our site for it. We had a lot of these, you know, the top buyers of our site. Some of them came, some came with kids and stuff like that, because everyone was like, okay, I'm getting to see a celebrity. And they spoke very well about it. The cost of that to be all in all, we paid Mandira Media at around two and a half lakhs. The cost of you know all this press, press, everything else, I remember some money and money coming from that. So the total cost of that to be was four lakh rupees. The value for me out of that was more than fifty lakh rupees. And you know, once we got that category started. We, we actually got such a lot of traction in the category. I remember that for the next year, for our next year's budgeting, you know, we almost kind of sailed through for the first five or six months, just on the basis of you know the, the growth in lifestyle category. So I'm just giving this as a one-off example. And then I think post that we've done this similarly with the Genevia this the, the point I'm making is, you know. In today's world, which is so socially connected, you have to think non-traditional. You have to think from the customer's point of view. You have to think, what is it that will engage that customer? Because everybody else is doing a push, push, push. And yes, you have to do a lot of push. And I'll talk about some of the techniques a little later. Push is very, very important. But in push, it's you're as good as anybody else. How do you get that multiplier? How do you get at the end of the day, you know, the inorganic, the paid for contribution to come down and the organic contribution to move up little by little by little. And today actually, if you think about it, with social media, this is it has in any business that you do, it has Huge, huge opportunity, and you know, and you don't know one of them can go viral. And if you keep trying enough, so I agree that that Kolhapuri deal, you nobody could have predicted that it will go as viral as it did. But the fact is, it wasn't a song; it was a video. You know, it was on YouTube. So there's a bunch of things which I've done. It's the way that guy sang it. So, so therefore, it's extremely important to keep thinking a little out of the box and see from the consumer's point of view, how is it that you can create any kind of content which you know, will, will kind of get absorbed, which will kind of get shared, which is something, you know, there I don't know how many news channels there are, which the press will pick up. Because that's how you start getting multiplier effects. And then 
you know, today, virtually all media is present online. You know, you can get into things like, you know, cross-linking the information back to your site, which drives you know, your basic uh, search engine optimization, shows up higher in natural search. I mean, there's a whole series of stuff that can be done. Which takes me on to you know, a little more of the more conventional stuff. Just search. As you know, markets get more cluttered, as more and more brands come, you know, search is just keep on growing, right? So this I think data is probably Google data. So ninety-three percent of you know, mind cycles begin with the search. It's very, very rarely that people just type in you know, that website because you're like, I don't know what to show up. Maybe somebody's having, you know, thousand tickets and you're selling thousand tickets. So, I, I'm sorry, you mean by cycles, you mean bicycles or <coughs> the buying process? No, buying cycles and buying process. <coughs> You all know Google is a fifty billion dollar company, right? In nineteen ninety nine, it was a startup. And in the U.S., this is still having a seventy one percent share. So search is extremely, extremely big. Search is very, very simply two parts. The one, the box and drive. Is there any techniques that can, can an icon can come on first? Because I say my shoes. He's the man who let you do that. But no, I'll come to it. I'm stuck. Yeah, so there is natural search, which is essentially where Google indexes content, which is more relevant. And I'll talk about stuff, uh, some of the techniques that you can start coming up. Uh, and the other one is page search, or which is called search engine marketing. You know, let me begin by talking about search engine marketing. Uh, in search engine marketing, essentially, you, you know, select a set of keywords. You set a price for it, which is what you feel you can afford. You, know, you make them as tight as possible and as contextual as possible. You know, and you kind of go onto the Google AdWords program. Uh, what you essentially have to measure, uh, or let me talk measurement a little later. Okay. Uh, so, so that's one. The second thing is, uh, and here's your point, which is that you, what we've seen is, if you do search engine marketing in conjunction with search engine optimization, so you have some of your natural search results which also start showing up in conjunction with paid ads. And the consumer sees, okay, there is, you know, let's say, great deals to go up and Indigo. And there's something about Indigo again on natural search. The chances of that person clicking, you know, uh, on your ad or on, you know, the toolbar goes up by 4x. So that is a very, very important part. What all you need to do to mention, to you know, make sure that uh, you know, your campaign is going to deliver, is it's very, very important to have very, very crisp copy, and very, very crisp call to action. And I'll show an example of a very, very important to have a very, very clear landing page. Because the idea is not just to drive a click, because Google is charging you per click. The idea is that once the guy lands onto that landing page, you know, he completes whatever that activity that you want him to do. This is Excuse me. I have a question. How is the paid uh, ad, whatever, the second you know, right hand side is shown? Different from the organic uh, thing. So, in the organic search, you cannot pay for it. You can't ask for yourself to be ranked up there. 
it is something which Google kind of, that's the Google secret sauce and the Google algorithm which shows up, you know, your content if, if they feel it's relevant enough. And therefore, to be, I'll come to how, how to make it relevant. The way to become more relevant from a natural search perspective is to have content which is very, very specific. So let me give a very simple example. So if somebody was, suppose you are, suppose, uh, you know, if you're talking of eyewear. Now, suppose you have some indexed content around, <coughs> you know, the weekly or, or this season's great, you know, fashionable trends on sunglasses, right? Or you start making it even more contextual and have it for December, <coughs> November, and October, and, you know? The chances of that showing up is much higher than if you have saying, great eyewear available. So in terms of natural search, what is very, very important is to have content which is very, very specific. So it's a very simple thing. If uh, somebody's name is Sanjay, and you're searching for Sanjay, you'll have a whole bunch of Sanjays that will show up. If Sanjay, somebody's name is Sanjay Manohar Gopinath Shinde, and somebody actually searches for it, there'll be maybe three Sanjay Manohar Gopinath Shinde, and the chance of that showing up is much higher. So similarly, in terms of, uh, you know, I'll talk about the tips later. Uh, but fundamentally, the more content you have, the more relevant content you have, the more specific content you have, allows you to show up on national search better. The other one is the page search, how do you move up there, is fundamentally a function of what is it that you're willing to pay, and uh, what are your click-through rates. I mean, there are a lot of other stuff there, but broadly, this is what matters. Your click-through rates and what is it that you're willing to pay to click. The thing to remember is in the case of paid search, you're paying every time there's a click. That click could result in a transaction, or may not result in a transaction. In the case of the other one, you know, it's, it's not paying for, for the content. <coughs> So for example, this is an example of a very good landing page. Right? Because there is a call to action, there is a coupon on top. There's a price with a price off. So if, assuming I'm looking for these gray moccasins, I'm like, okay, it, you know, I'm actually getting it at 18% off and I save $10 out of it. And I can also use this promo code. So something like this will have a much better click-through rate to the next fulfilling the transaction versus if you just had great shoes and just had a listing. So let me talk about you know how do you kind of optimize sales. So a lot of it depends on you know what's you know what is the way that you are kind of setting up the content so that the Google crawlers can read it better. So do you have a very very clear and specific page title? Right? That is really really important. Uh, what does your URL say? Uh, what's the exact description that you put? And is it very, very specific? So these are ways in by which you can start moving up you know, your, uh, your natural search run. Then there's a host of other things that you can do. Okay. Which is, so part of what I spoke about initially is the was in terms of what are you doing on your own page. The other thing is, are you able to kind of link it up with other sites which have a very high you know, page rank? 
because then Google says, okay, this is not just an individual who's you know, uh, put something out, but it's kind of got cross effort to other Google terms on it uh, by, let's say, India Times you know, or a Yahoo. If you have these kind of cross linkages established, that means that, you know, okay, it, it's something which is kind of much more meaningful to Google to kind of draw. I spoke about some of this. Essentially, you use need to use the exact relevant keywords, and you have to keep on, you know, experimenting, uh, doing tests and learns to see what combination of keywords work. Uh, use the right amount of descriptive page titles and section headers because again, that kind of gets picked up. Uh, organize your sitemap better. Uh, again, allow sharing across social networks because that improves you know, the, the quality of links that you get. Uh, and again, you know, this is a constant process where you keep on building and testing a portfolio of relevant keywords. So it's not that you set up a campaign and just kind of let it run off. And like I said, keep measuring how it's done. Just, you know, Can you just expand on uh, what you mean by when you say organize your sitemap for easy crawling? Can you just expand on that just a bit? So uh, I think it's so it, it's a function of all of this, right? From the so, so let me give you an example. So, So by that I mean, do you have the right page title? What does your URL say? You know, are you describing what your page is about? You know, very, very specifically. In a manner which distinguishes it from competition. From, yeah. So be specific versus being general. If you're <coughs> selling canvas shoes, talk about canvas shoes. If you're selling, don't just say shoes. Don't just say casual shoes. You know, because Google is going to there are millions and millions of pages. It's how you become more relevant, more specific. How is it that other sites, you know, see you as being relevant and are maybe linking with you, which you know, helps you move up. <coughs> how you get shareability, you know, by through your users. So, you know, it kind of reaches out to more and more people. Which makes more. Uh, I'll now come to email marketing. Uh, like I said, this is if you're doing anything around uh, you know, in the online space, to my mind, this is one area which all of you need to keep on experimenting. Because this is where you know, the real value lies. Because once you've got that consumer you know, hook, you have this contactability. And you know, there is numerous data from offline and online and so on. The cost of getting a new customer is anything, 4x, 5x, whatever, <coughs> that of the <coughs> So if you have this bunch of customers, how do you kind of do message stuff which is more and more relevant to them? So I, I just picked this up from the Yeli site. Okay. It's got a call to action. It's got uh, the fact that you can share it across the social network. Uh, and it's very, very specific. And again, you will find that different customers will respond to different messages. And therefore, you need to have the analytics and the segmentation capability to do that. You will find that there could be a bunch of customers who are only interested in price offs. There could be another bunch of customers who want the, you know, what do you call the, what shoppers call the preview sales. You know, the, they want to be the first guys to get the latest trends. And you will know, get to know that only if you are you know, keeping on doing 
constant campaigning uh, and seeing results and response rates. Uh, okay. Very, very simply, I mean, what are the fundamental rules of email marketing? Number one is when you get in the user, get him to opt in. Do not spam. Loyalty One runs this uh, program in Canada called Air Miles. Basically, it's one common card across multiple brands. So instead of having eight, ten different loyalty cards, you have this one card, and you earn whether you are, you know, using a credit card or debit card or shopping for fuel or using, you know, talk time or going to a departmental store. Uh, I think they do. Approximately, they do 104 messages at the peak a year. So they do two SMS campaigns and two email campaigns a week to the base. They have 65% of Canada's population which uses this card. The opt-out ratio, but and this is the peak. So if the user defines that I want to receive it, you know, as you give it. I want to receive it once a week. I want to receive it once a month. You know, I want all like all the big offers to be once a month. The opt-out.